Hello YouTube, this is going to be a brief video on methods for adding and subtracting polynomial expressions. Okay, And so let's go ahead and start by taking a look up here in the top left corner where I've defined two functions, f of x and g of x, but you'll see f of x is this top function here, this third degree polynomial, 3x cubed plus 2x squared minus x minus 7, and g of x is this other third degree polynomial, x cubed minus 10x squared plus 8. And so in this video, we're, we're going to find both a sum and a difference, but we're going to find f of x plus g of x and f of x minus g of x. Okay? So let's go ahead and start with the sum of these two functions. Now, the sum of, this two func of these two functions excuse me, can be found in two ways, but uh, the first way and the most common way is horizontally. Okay? So when we say horizontally, basically what we're saying is this. f of x plus g of x, we're going to write this out horizontally. And that is, we say uh, we have f of x, which, which is uh, 3x cubed plus 2x squared minus x minus 7. So this is, our, this is our f of x expression. We're taking this plus, okay? So plus g of x, which is x cubed minus 10x squared plus 8 in parentheses. So we say here we have our expression horizontally uh, listed or in roster notation. We say, okay, we want to add these things together now. Uh, the important thing to note here is this. Because the second set of parentheses has a plus in front of it, um, it doesn't necessarily affect anything that's in this second quantity over here. But it is important that we quantify, that is, we put in parentheses, all of g of x. But because there's a plus in front, we can actually just go ahead and drop all of the parentheses in this expression. And what we're going to do, really, essentially, is going to combine like terms. So uh, by combine like terms, we say we're going to combine the coefficients of anything that have the same variables to the same powers. And so... For example, we have three of these x cubed things here, and we have one of these x cubed things over here. Actually, let's do this. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and write this out. 3x cubed plus 2x squared minus x minus 7 plus x cubed minus 10x squared plus 8, dropping the parentheses. But we say again, we're going to combine our x cubes here because they are like terms. So we say uh, 3x cubed, excuse me, plus one more x cubed is four of these x cubes. So those now, I, I like to cross them out just to show that they're out of the way. Let's move on to the next biggest exponent on an x. We say uh, x squared. So we say we have two of these x squareds here and negative 10 of them here. So really we're just combining the coefficients. We say a positive 2 and a negative 10 give us negative 8. Negative 8 of these x squared things. So now those are gone. We say moving right along, we say x. Okay, well we've got an x here and it's the only x. x to the first that is. So we say, okay, so minus x, that's now gone. And then we'll do our constants last, which we had a negative 7 and a positive 8. And when combining those, we get positive 1. So this is what we would refer to as the sum of f of x plus g of x. And so we say this is, this is f of x plus g of x. So that's how to do this in a very, very horizontal, horizontal fashion. Now, horizontal, what's, the, what's kind of the opposite of horizontal? Vertical. And so we can actually do the same thing we just did by actually taking f of x and adding on g of x in a very vertical fashion like we're kind of used to doing with real numbers. So in order to do this, it's really important, uh, but we're going to go ahead and quantify these things again. So f of x on top, we're going to say is still 3x cubed plus 2x squared minus x minus 7. We're going to put this all in parentheses and we're subtracting off now. That's our f of x. We're subtracting off g of x. Now, just like it's important when you stack real numbers and add them or subtract them, you have to line up your place values. That is, you have to like line up your ones or your holes with your holes, and then you know your tens with your tens, and your hundredths with your hundredths, and your thousands with your thousands. You know, um, this is very much the same thing. So when we put in g of x here, uh, we're going to stack our g of x here. We say x cubed, and this is plus by the way. X cubed. Uh, it has minus ten of these x squareds, and it actually had no x's. I'm going to leave that blank for now. We say plus 8 constants. But the important thing is this, that our place values are lining up. Now, if we had to fill in something here for our x's, we say, how many x's does this have? Since it had none, we could technically say plus 0 of these x's. And, you know, I, I often don't even fill that in. But, but when you do, let's just put it in with a 0. So now, uh, these things being written out, we can see a negative 7 and a positive 8 over here on the right. That came out to be our positive 1. We say a negative x plus no x's is still negative x. Uh, 2x squareds uh, and a negative 10 uh, quantity of these x squareds is negative 8 of these x squared things. And then we say how many x cubes? Well, we say 3 plus 1 more is 4 of these x cubes. And you see we, we turn out the same sum as we did up here when we did this horizontally. So 
Often I find that people prefer to actually stack these expressions as opposed to write them out horizontally because they can get kind of lengthy horizontally. But we want to know how to do both. So let's go ahead and find a sum, or excuse me, a difference. We just found a sum. So let's go ahead and find the difference of these two polynomial functions, starting with the horizontal method for doing this. So we say f of x minus g of x. Again, recall that it's really important that we're quantifying all these things. When I say quantify, I mean putting them in parentheses. That looks a little messy. Let's clean this up a little bit here. So 3x cubed plus 2x squared minus x minus 7. All of that is f of x. So that's our, that's our f function. Minus, now g of x, we say, oops, is x cubed minus 10x squared plus 8. So now, this time is a little bit different. When we're subtracting off g of x, which is quantified, it has a negative in front, which really we could interpret as being a negative 1. And so what we're going to do is we're going to distribute this negative value throughout here. What it really does is, let's go ahead and rewrite this dropping all parentheses, but we say our first quantity here is not going to be any different uh, because it had a, you know, it didn't have a negative out in front of its parentheses. But we say really this negative, what it does is it, it alternates the sign of everything that was in the second quantity over here. So we noticed that we had this x cubed here was positive. It now becomes negative x cubed. This negative 10x squared was negative, so now it's positive. 10x squared, and then this positive 8, it'll now become negative 8. And so now what we're doing is really the same thing we did in the last problem, it's just that we had to distribute the negative. So it's really important that we do that. So now we say x cubed. Well, we say x cubed here and x cubed here. We have how many total? We have 3 plus negative 1. So 3 minus 1 is 2, so we say 2x squared. Uh, so now those are out of the way. Let's move on to our x squared. We have 2 of them here and 10 of them here. So 2 and 10 make our 12 total of these x squareds, so those are out of the way. We say x, okay, so we have just one of these x to the firsts, so we have minus x, and that's now out of the way, and then we say, okay, so constant-wise, we have negative 7 and negative 8, that's a grand total of negative 15. So this is our difference, difference of these two polynomials. Kind of easy to find, actually. So let's do this one more time, except for this time we're not going to do this horizontally, we're going to find this difference vertically, that is, we're going to find f of x minus g of x, kind of like how we're used to doing with real numbers. So, writing this out, remember we want to quantify everything. So that is, put them in parentheses. So 3x squared plus 2, 3x cubed, excuse me, plus 2x squared, minus x minus 7, all in parentheses. And again, so we say minus this time. We want to line up our place values. So when we put in g of x down here, we say, okay, so we've got x cubed goes underneath the other x cubes. Uh, negative 10x squared goes underneath the other x squareds, and then we had plus 8 over here. And we will go ahead and fill this in to be consistent here with the plus 0x. So now finding this, the important thing is we actually have to rewrite this expression. And again, the reason why is because we've got a negative in front of this expression. So we need to distribute this, and this all becomes this now. We say 3x cubed plus 2x squared on top, minus x minus 7, all that on top. And now we'll just say it's the same thing as adding the opposite. So now that x cubed becomes negative, our negative 10x squared becomes positive 10x squared, and our, our positive 8 on the end there becomes negative 8, and we still have a plus 0x here because we had no x's. But now we can just go ahead and treat this like a sum. So we'd say, okay, well, you know, start on the right here. Negative 7 and a negative 8 gives us a negative 15. Uh, negative x and a 0x is still negative x. Uh, 2x squared and 10x squared is a total of 12 of these x squared things. And then last but not least, we say, well, 3 of these x cubes and negative 1 of these x cubes uh, it comes out to be 2 of these x cubes. And so you can see here that we get the same difference expression as we did when we did this horizontally. Either way, when you find a difference, you have to distribute the negative in front of the entire quantity throughout the whole thing. So it's really important that you include parentheses around these expressions when you, when you set them up.